Mr. Trade, step up to the plate. Mr. Trade, step up to the plate. We've been waiting for you. Are you a coward? Are you a coward? It's your time, boy. What can I change? What can I smoke? Your life is a joke. <laughs> Step up. We've all been waiting. We see you fall from that. You've got me. We know you lost a hundred pounds. How much have you lost since then? <laughs> Tell them the truth. Anxiety. Or laziness, which is it, Mr. Trey? Tell me, what can you change? Well, um. <sighs> I guess I have some explaining to do. So, um, I guess let's get to it. The weight loss, the anxiety. Is it true or is it a lie? I think that's how I answer those questions. Well, I've been working out three times a day. And what I've truly learned is that even with my own anxiety, I've kind of let it hold me back. You know, I lost 100 pounds and I got super lazy after that. Look at the belly fat in the back. Look at that. Look at the shirt. Disgusting. Listen, I'm not here to make no damn excuses. Okay? Pardon my language. I could have been working hard, focusing more on my diet, focusing more on what the food I eat. But I chose to use my anxiety to uh, push me out. There's nothing wrong with losing 100 pounds, taking a quick break, maintaining your weight and do it again and then take off the last hundred but what I chose to do sorry about that what I chose to do was um not do that <laughs> I chose to get lazy I decided to let my anxiety rule my life um and I, when I lost the first hundred pounds, um, I wasn't working out. You know why? Because I was too scared to. That's the truth. And every time I tried to work out, I couldn't do it. And now I'm back to working out and getting back into it. And there's something that I noticed the other day. So I'm going to tell this quick short story really quick. And then I'll continue on. So I'm at the gym all by myself. I've been afraid to walk into the gym for almost a year. I've been afraid to walk into the gym for almost a year. And because of my body. Even though I had lost weight, I was still super fat. And I got self-conscious, guys. Really self-conscious. To the point where I was afraid to... I couldn't even take off my jacket at work. I was so ashamed of what I had become. Even though I had lost this weight, it, it proved to myself how, how fat I really was. Because even with the weight loss, I still had a belly. I still got a belly now. I couldn't take off my jacket at work because I was so embarrassed. I was sweating during the summer, guys, in my jacket because that's how embarrassed I was. I was afraid to walk into the gym, not only because of my anxiety, but because of another thing. I did not want to have to show people my body. I walked around my I went to church in my jacket. 
last this last Sunday, guys, was the first time I've ever taken off my jacket while I've been going to church. Cause I was afraid people would laugh at me and call me fat. Which they're right, I am fat. But I was just I was so self conscious. That's how embarrassing. I I wasn't even looking in the mirror. I was so embarrassed. And I was working out today. For the first time, I went to a gym with actual people. I was the only one in there. But still, I felt embarrassed. I was doing some tricep work. And I saw my stomach. And I was like, man, I'm just so dang fat. At that moment, my anxiety started to rise. You know something I noticed when I was at the gym? I was working out. I noticed when my anxiety got worse, I actually started get what I think is a bad thing. That anxiety, that feeling I get when I get super anxious, it's because I get adrenaline and stress hormones. But you notice what I can do with that? I noticed that if I use that stress or stress hormones, if I use that anxiety at that moment, it hits me the hardest. I can lift heavier. I can do more. Because it's regular adrenaline that regular people get. I may get a little bit excess of it because I'm coming off of drug abuse from a year ago. But nonetheless, I can still leverage it and still use it to my strength and work out well. But I've been such a fool. I've been so scared. I thought every time I got anxiety like that, it was a bad thing. But I started looking at my wrists. I started looking at when, whenever I got that adrenaline rush, I would, I used to think myself like, oh, my heart is pounding. And I would look at my watch and my heart rate hadn't gone up even a little bit. My heart rate had actually start going down because I'm not doing anything anymore. All these times I was getting this adrenaline, all the time I was getting these stress hormones, I thought it was raising my heart rate. So I would get scared to keep working out. But the more I started looking at my watch, the more I started paying attention and start feeling my heart, I realized that my heart rate's not going up. I, I realized that my heart's not beating out of my chest. It's, it's, it's in my head. All this adrenaline and all that I'm getting, that's all real. But what I choose to do with it is so powerful. If I lift weights, because I noticed I started boxing, right? And I've been boxing for about a month and a half, two months now. And when I box and I get that same anxiety, I notice if I just keep boxing, it goes away. The same thing when I was lifting weights. I was lifting the weights and I started getting that anxiety. And you know how when you're working out, you got to warm up, right? So you're working out, blah, blah, blah. You do your next set, blah, 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 second warm up. And then normally after you get warmed up, you can hit it pretty easy, right? At first it's kind of heavy because your muscles aren't got that blood pumping or anything like that. You haven't, you know, or what, however you get warmed up. But when that adrenaline hit me, I was hitting this weight, right? Hitting it. I was like, man, this is super heavy to me. I was like, I can normally do this weight easy, but I did it anyway. And then I got to my third set, right? And that adrenaline hit me. And I remember just feeling, oh boy, fight or flight, you know? And I like, well, if I die here, I die here. So I go back to the weight, I pick it up, and it was just like, bing, 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 bing. I don't work out like that, to be fair. I still do it slow and controlled. But it was so easy. I was like, boom, boom. And I was hitting it like it was nothing. And I learned in that moment, I cannot let my anxiety take over my life. Because I've been feeling this same exact anxiety for a year now. And it was worse before. So if I truly believe my anxiety is going to kill me, it would have killed me back then. And even if it kills me today, if, I, if whatever I think is wrong with me comes to fruition, right? And I die from whatever I'm scared of. Imagine had I been working out that whole time and had that same anxiety and I just worked out through it. How, how much further in life I could have been. It's only been a year, but I still could have been working out that whole time, building my muscle, getting used to working out. You know, and I probably could have dropped this last hundred pounds by now. But because I let my anxiety take over my life, I took a break and I stopped. I, I, I had believed that this was my life and it was never going to get better. But if I had just kept going, where would I be? I'm not saying I, I may have not dropped all the hundred pounds, but I know I'd be less than I would. I'd be closer to my goal than I, way closer to my goal than I am today. If I would have just believed. And so that's where I'm at today. I had to call myself out. This is my second video calling myself out from the sports, which was a, uh, a crutch. 
and me not working out and continuing to focus on my health, I made my anxiety a crutch in both of those situations. I say no more. Listen, if I die, one thing I will make for sure, one, I will die for God. I will do my very best to live my life as a godly man and be, what do they call it, uh, puritanical. I'll be those things. And I will try every day to be as pure as I can and preach as many messages and try to keep my cussing down, listen to the right kind of music and no music at all. I don't really listen to music anymore, but listen to the right videos. And that's all hard. Be a good husband. All that stuff comes first. But then after that, what ties into all that too, take care of my body. Because how can I say I love God and love, love people if I'm treating myself like trash? That's self-hate. Eat myself to death? That ain't right. So I got to continue to do that. Working out. Keep my body fresh. So if one day God gets to bless us with another kid, I can be there for that child for as long as however. I can't. Listen, and don't get me wrong. I can't help tragedy. If I leave my house today and I get in a car crash and I die, there's nothing I can do. I can try to avoid the car crash. But if somebody runs into me and I'm gone forever, oh, well. But as long as I get the chance to breathe, why not make the best of it? Why use the rest of my life being scared to die? Because a man who suffers, a man who fears suffering is already suffering from fear. And that's not true faith, in my opinion. How can I say, now, listen, I'm not getting too crazy. I'm not saying if you're if you have anxiety and stress that you lack faith. I'm only talking about me. But how can I myself say I have all this faith in God. But the second I get some anxiety, I run to something else. I would run to sports. I ran to porn. I've ran to sex. I've ran, I've ran to drugs. I've ran to food. As soon as I get a little bit of anxiety, I run to all these things. I never run to God and just believe. When I kept lifting that weight in the gym, that was one of the first times I've ever got that, that wave of anxiety and decided to keep working out. Most of the time I would have left the gym and said, oh, I guess I'm done. Can't do it. I give up. I'm, I'm quitting. Not no more. Listen, death is going to find us all. It's going to find me. It's going to find you. But at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is what happens after death. Life is short. Eternity is not. Life is short, but eternity is not. I need to live my life with the eternal in mind. And that also means not overeating. That also means taking care of my body. Because... If I'm over here overeating all the time, I'm not taking care of my body. I'm harming my body. I'm eating more than it needs. I'm giving into the pleasure that processed food can give me. The, 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 uh, the, the mindset that food can give me because when I was growing up, I was so depressed and I'm not blaming my parents. I'm going to, I don't know what was wrong with me, but I grew up so depressed. I was adopted. I was a black kid in an all white school. I was all of these things. I got called nigger, blah, blah, blah. All the, yeah. Anime, sad story. Okay. Whatever. But nonetheless, I turned to food at this time. I didn't turn to drugs or alcohol. I turned to food and it was my reward for when I get home. I know I just got bullied and got called nigger 55 times, but I'm going to go eat. That's going to make me feel better and hear me out. Even that is in my head. Getting called nigger 55 times was not true. I maybe got called nigger maybe once or twice a week. But it was because I got called that I would make up any excuse to go eat. Because I was a child. I didn't know any better. And then I grew up with the same mindset. Anybody time somebody called me fat, oh, got to go eat. Anytime some girl rejected me, oh, got to go eat. Anytime I failed a test, got to go eat. Anytime I did bad at work, got to go eat. And if I had good, this is the bad part. Even when I had good times, oh, gotta go eat. Gotta go eat. Man, today's going great. Gotta go eat. This is the best day of my life. I got a girlfriend. Let's go eat and celebrate. I never let my anxiety go any crazy because anytime I felt any sadness and anxiety, I ran to food. And I think that also, when I started losing a lot of weight, I think even that pushed on with the drugs it made it worse for me because when I started losing weight and I wasn't eating for pleasure and when I started smoking when I stopped smoking weed for pleasure and I did both of those at the exact same time and then I gave up porn my anxiety went to the root because I no longer had an outlet and I think 
being porn being the biggest and then food being the second biggest, right? Because porn, well, actually, porn and food went hand in hand for me. I didn't start doing drugs until I was much older, but food and food and uh, food and porn went together like that. Both of them were escaped. I could not stop eating. Anytime I got bored, I ate. Anytime I felt sad, I ate. Anytime I felt bored, I looked at porn. Anytime I felt sad, I looked at porn. It was always an escape for me. And now look at me, obese, in my 30s, can barely run, can barely do push-ups. It's a goddamn shame, and it's embarrassing, and it's getting ridiculous. I don't need to make any more excuses for myself. I need to make change, or something's going to... Either way, either I lose the weight and I start living a healthy life, and I make a change that way, or I'm going to get fatter, and one day I'm going to die from a heart attack or something else or anything else. But any, it doesn't matter how I die. If I die still obese, and I have the opportunity to not be obese, meaning if God gives me five more years and I don't take advantage, if God gives me two more years and I, I, I choose to stay obese, I gave up and I failed myself. So either I make change or change is going to happen. Regardless, either I can control it or faith will control it. I, I'll die. I'll either die a non-obese man or I'll die an obese man. I'll either die a porn addict or die a non-porn addict. I'll either die addicted to sports as an escape too or die a non-sports addict. I'm addicted to so many things that I didn't even realize it. I, I thank God for that moment I had in the gym the other day when that anxiety hit me and I pushed through and it felt like an awakening. I'm not going to go too crazy because I know everybody says they have awakening and people people kind of take it to the different level when they're like, I had a sexual awakening and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to take it that far. But just know that I it felt like what people would call. But really, it was just an epiphany. Really, it was just a realization that a lot of this stuff is in my head. And am I still going to feel the physical symptoms, the disorientation? Am I going to feel crazy sometimes? Yes, that's part of anxiety. But does it have to rule my life? Absolutely not.